Radio.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. I I just can't play this clip enough. It's such a classic. It does belong in the same pantheon with Hank Johnson's Guam capsizing comment. Ooh, what is it? This is KJP from the other day. Oh, yeah. This is Yeah. This is a classic. I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your wall down. KJP (sighs) uh, talking about uh, how why Biden would veto legislation introduced by Republican Congressman Diaz Ballard and McClintock of California and Florida respectively that would add border patrol and, and and add a border barrier and all the things that are sensible that the political class in DC can't find its way to do but that uh, is something that's rejected out of hand by the big guy Mr. 10 percent and KJP explain why The bill H.R. 2 would be a disaster for border security and a Christmas morning gift for human smugglers. It would lead to more unlawful migration by blocking off lawful pathways to protection. It would trample on our nation's core values and international obligations and a boon to dictators around the world. And instead of providing the needed resources for more border security technology and asylum officers and judges, It would waste taxpayer dollars on an ineffective wall. Again, an ineffective wall that can't even withstand heavy winds. (laughs) Can't build a wall that will withstand Uh, those Texas winds. Also, um, a Christmas morning gift. Is it Christmas? What? I don't even understand the... So, so, but yeah, right. The, uh, The wall can't withstand the wind, so there's no point in building it. Mark Morgan is former U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation, and he's at the border this week in El Paso. I hope he's withstanding the winds. Mark, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Dan, Amy, thanks for having me on. And you, you always know how to get me fired up, right? I mean, you had to play that clip. Every, I mean, everything. Have you thought that about this wind about... problem? You haven't thought about this wind problem? Exactly. But remember, this is the this is the same woman who said to to another reporter, "Well." It's not like the illegal aliens just walked across the border. No, no, no. That's exactly what they do every day, all day long. I, I mean, everything that came out of her mouth is not only is a lie, but you could actually say that with respect to that's exactly what this administration is doing. I mean, the hypocrisy. You, it, I've never seen it like this in D.C. It's always been there's always been hypocrisy. It's never been this bad. And well, the other reason, oh, well, oh. just for quick, quickly, the other reason why we don't need a wall, in addition to the wind problem, is because uh, Ali Mayorkas said the border's secure. So, I don't. What, what is? What? Why do we need to build a wall or add more border security or surveillance? It, or? It, it, exactly, Dan. If I can, real quick. So, so I, just folks, listen. It's a tried and true method. They, they don't have to trust me. Just talk to the border patrol agents, the men and women who risk their lives every single day on the front lines of our nation's border, literally risking their lives to stop the vast complex set of threats coming in. You ask any one of them, this is what they'll say. This is what works to secure our border, a multi-layer strategy of infrastructure, technology, and personnel. They won't say that one of those elements is the solution, but all three of those together combined in strategic correct locations along the border increases every single measure of success. An integral part of that multi-layer strategy is a wall. They lied about it four years ago. They're lying about it right now. Wow. And so what's it like in El Paso? I mean, I've used to live there and uh, some friends are telling me that they've never seen anything like this in their 40 plus years there and that people are literally on the streets that it's you know in the 12th ward it's covered with people and in Ciudad Juarez there are 10,000 people waiting to cross over when this expires yep. later tonight Amy, everything you just said, that's absolutely correct. I, I lived in El Paso as, my, as well for, for a couple of years. And last night I did something that nobody from the Biden administration has done, including Secretary Mayorkas. I actually went to the home of a lifelong resident of El Paso. And, the, and, the, and their home was 
filled to capacity with 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 uh, uh, people who actually live here, community members. And I stood there and I sat there and I listened to them. And I tell you, Dan, Amy, they are mad. They're angry. They're frustrated. They feel like their 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 own government has abandoned them. Their communities, they said, are overrun. They don't feel safe in their communities. I, I uh, we listened to a rancher, uh, that you know, third fourth generation rancher who said she doesn't even feel comfortable or safe in her own home in the United States. That's where we're at right now. Uh, have, did you see Bobby O'Rourke down there? What's he up to? He used to represent the area, right? He's from El Paso. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't heard much from uh, a crazy Beto lately. Uh-huh. And um, the other uh, members of the Democrat caucus that are part of the Texas delegation, where where are they? I, I haven't heard them me tooing Greg Abbott. I haven't heard them I guess, saying anything of the sort that you heard from the residents of El Paso. That's exactly right. And they were successful just now. There's a HB 20. It's a bill in, in Texas here. Uh, it's not perfect. You know, most bills aren't perfect, but, but there were some very, very effective things that would give governor and Texas DPS and National Guard even more 40 to fill the gap left by this administration. And uh, it, it, I heard this week it was killed. Uh, so, again, here we are in the, the worst self-inflicted, unmitigated border security crisis in our lifetime, and we still can't get Congress uh, to, to get a meaningful border security bill uh, on the floor for a vote, and, and Texas uh, apparently can't do it either. I mean, this way, and, and just, you know, the last two days, the daily average apps just for border toll, Dan and Amy, yeah. 10,000. 10,000. That, that's the highest ever recorded in, in our lifetime since we've been recording apprehension data. 10,000 in a 24-hour period. I, I can't help, though, but to speak to the politics of this since this is a political will problem. So yep. um, Bobby O'Rourke, uh, Veronica Escobar, Democrat, represents that area now. I mean, it's sort of the same conversation that we have up here, uh, with the hue and cry from Lori Lightfoot and Democrat Pauls who made Chicago a sanctuary city and Illinois a sanctuary state. All of a sudden, they don't want migrants who want to come to Chicago in Chicago, but I thought we were a welcoming place. Well, I thought that Democrats wanted open borders. So, hey, residents of El Paso, why do you elect people like Bobby O'Rourke and Veronica Escobar? Yeah, I, I think that's a fair question. You know, I, I've been following the stuff, obviously, in Chicago, too. It's, it's a joke. I mean, first of all, it, it's very important you listen to understand. The Biden administration for the past 26 months, they, they've been transporting illegal aliens to, to every one of these sanctuary cities, including Chicago. They were just doing it in secrecy under the cover of darkness. It's not till Republican governors do it openly that all right. of a sudden now it's an issue, right? And, and, and again, I think these governors were genius. They did it on purpose in the open to, to garner the media attention that they are. And, and this is very important. Every single illegal alien that's been put on a bus or a plane, whether it's by the governor or, or, or the Biden administration, that individual wanted to go to Chicago. Right. They wanted to go to New York. Nobody's forcing them. And why? Just as you said, why do they want to go to Chicago? Because they're a sanctuary city, because they're going to be rewarded. They're going to be protected. They're going to be able to work illegally, stay here illegally. They're not going to work with ICE. You're going to give them free health care. You're going to give them free education. The list goes on and on and on. That's why they're going to Chicago. Now, we saw in Chicago, New York, and these other sanctuary cities are claiming foul. It's a joke. And, I mean, we've had 7,000 in total in the past, what, six months coming here? That is nothing compared to 10,000 a day that are coming into El Paso. Yeah, Amy, that's exactly right. That's the other just absurd hypocrisy that's going on. I, I drove the community uh, all day yesterday. I saw the, 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 just the, the, the trash and the filth and the overcrowdedness. And when the community members, they were like, they were like Mark, I, I don't even feel, there are community members that don't feel safe to go and drop their kids off at a nearby school because they have to walk around illegal aliens sleeping in the streets. I mean, that's where we're at right now. And keep in mind, this is very important. Illegal immigration is not a victimless crime because what happens when you have the massive, when we have millions like we have now, unprecedented, that pulls border patrol resources off the front line, off their national security mission. Their mission really has been completely transformed from a law enforcement border security mission to a processing humanitarian. That's not their statutory mission. Literally, there's no border patrol agents on the front line of our nation's border to, to, to counter the cartel, to stop drugs, stop criminals and stop potential national security threats from pouring in. Instead, 24 hours, they're processing and releasing illegal aliens. So, so, I mean, where does this go when there is no 
seeming desire on the part of the national leadership of America to address this in a meaningful way, given you know what we've been seeing and talking about all week, what's been reported, uh, what Raul Artez, the chief uh, uh, Border Patrol, is telling us about the the amount of uh, drugs being confiscated, gangbangers getting in, gotaways, and so on, so all the things that you're saying. So what what, what happens down there? What, yeah, what, so, so right. what, what does the next two weeks look like? What does the next month look like? What is tomorrow? Th- that's a very good question, because once once Title 42 ends in a few hours today, it's not the start of the crisis. And Danny, I know you know you know this. We, we've talked before. It, it, look, we've already been in, in the worst unmitigated crisis. It, it's going to take, I mean, the best analogy is once Title 42 ends today, it's going to take the sustained hurricane that we've been having to deal with and turn it into to a tsunami. That That's what's going to happen. And this administration has showed again and again, they're doubling down. They're going to continue with their open border policy. They're going to continue to refuse to enforce the law. They're going to change the law. They're going to change statutory definitions with respect to the responsibility. Secretary Marcus is going to continue to abdicate uh, and abuse his authority. He's going to continue to rewrite law and tell his troops and and enforcement personnel not to enforce the law. That's what we're going to continue to get under this administration. Um, So unfortunately, I, 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 I don't see much changing until 2025. Well, this is what he said yesterday, his stern warning, you know, to mules. Do not listen to the lies of the smugglers. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen to you. You will be returned. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, I'm shaking in my boots. Exactly. But that, that is the response. And you don't have to be a border security expert to know this man is lying. I mean, look, I, look anybody listen, please just take about, I promise, it'll take you about four minutes. Go to CB, go, on your iPhone, go to CBP stats. Just type that in. And, and, and it'll pull up. The first page that you're going to see is data, and it shows the number of apprehensions, the number of encounters, and it also shows the number of those that are removed versus released. It's a lie. Secretary Marcus is lying. Look at his own agency's data, and it shows that the man is a habitual liar. And so the cartels in this in this instant, they're not lying. When they're, when they're telling the illegal aliens, hey, the majority of you, you're going to be released. And those that you aren't released, hey, a couple of tries, you're going to be among the gotaways. That's not a lie right now under this administration. Under the Trump administration, love or hate him, I was there, it would have been a lie because we did have the most secure border. We were detaining and removing people. We were, were reducing the number of gotaways. Uh, Secretary Marcus, this is why this man's got to peach. Everything that comes out of mouth is a lie. He is Mark Morgan, former U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, visiting a fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Mark, thanks for joining us. Good luck down there. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan, Amy. Thanks for having me. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Listen to Dan and Amy on your smartphone. Download the AM560 mobile app today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. Your business and your money are in good hands with Signature Bank. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my 